Back it up for a second here. The problem really began way back. Sin brought into existence things that the world had never seen before. One of the main things that sin brought in was shame. Shame is invisible. That's why the gospel is not used for things that you can see, but it's used for things that you cannot see. Sometimes a person can have a smile on their face, but you can tell by the way that they carry themselves that they feel shame. Amen. They feel humiliated. They have a consciousness of all the wrong that they have done or the wrong that has been done to them and they don't know how to deal with it because they have not heard the gospel yet. Mm -hmm. In the garden it brought guilt. Yeah. It brought fear. It brought rebellion and dishonor. You look at our nation and we see so many people that live a life of dishonor. They dishonor their own bodies. They dishonor their own life. They dishonor their families. There used to be honor in a family name. Amen. Yes. My parents used to say, you're a Hudson. Mm -hmm. And Hudsons don't act like that. That's right. Today, children go out and do all kinds of sins and all kind of behavior and bring dishonor to their name. Yes. The Bible says that a name is better than silver and gold. That's right. Because if you have a name, people will trust you. Mm -hmm. If you have honor, people will lend to you and give favor to you, but we're losing the honor because sin is bringing destruction to a nation. One of the things that happens is that we begin to view ourselves different than the way God views us. Sin changed the consciousness of the mind. People begin to look at one another and look down on one another. Mm -hmm. The reason why we look down on a person because we look at their sin. We look at all their faults. We look at all their frailties. And we look at how you look. And look at your hair. And look how you dress. And look how you act. But when Jesus looks at us, he doesn't look at our sin. He looks at us differently. He sees his creation. That's right. When he looks at his creation, he loves his creation. The Bible says that God so loved the world. What are you talking about? He loved what he had created. That's right. He loved it so much that he was willing to die for us. We are different, you know. We are different than everything else that God created. You know, I've never seen an elephant and a squirrel decide to go to the moon. Hmm. <laughs> Sounds ridiculous, don't it? But don't you know that people take animals and put them up on the same plateau as a person? Yes. Mm -hmm. They take dogs and cats and fish and try to love them like you would love a little baby. Yes. Why? Because sin causes them to look at people and see sin, but when they look at an animal, they don't see sin. And so they can love the animal because they see sin in people. There is no sin in animals. Because animals don't have a consciousness. Animals don't know why it's wrong. Animals don't have a, a free will. And so they can freely control the animal and make them feel like they're loving them the way they want to love them. But when it comes to a person, because sin is in our life, sometimes we don't act right. Amen. A bird always acts like a bird. Get to a place where we understand what's really happening. Amen. And look at the big picture. Amen. The big picture is that sin is ravaging. It's nothing new. Sin is just getting worse, not getting better. Amen. They have new statistics out now in 2009-10 that by the time you reach the age of 26 years old, 65% of our society are alcoholics. Hmm. That's a big number. They've gone the other way and said, by the time a person is 12 years old, 37% of those kids are drinking. I'm saying this. Sin is just getting worse. Yes, it is. And what's happening is the stress of life is getting so heavy that people are turning to all kinds of drugs and things trying to, to find an escape and trying to be happy. 
And so we must really understand what the gospel is all about. The Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. Mm -hmm. And since there's nothing new under the sun, God knew what he was doing when he brought the gospel. That's right. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2, the Bible says that the gospel is an antidote for the poison of sin. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'm thankful for the gospel because I was one of those people that were subject to the power of sin in a way that was unusual. It was very unusual because I would do things like steal my mama's money, steal her car, steal her TV, steal her phone, steal her coin collection, steal everything that she had. And she was my mother. But sin was such a ravaging thing in my life. It had gotten so bad that I had no honor. I appreciate the gospel. It is the antidote. Hello, somebody. Amen. 